In this video, we will learn why Assam floods every year during monsoon. Here is Assam. Before we start, I want to give you a rough picture of the geographic terrain of northeastern region of our country. I'll quickly tell you in an informal way. If you look at this map, as you can see, we have the state of Sikkim, then Bhutan as a country, and then the state of Arunachal Pradesh. Now if you look at the India-China border, which is this line, this border line is nothing but the natural Himalayan mountain range. Even in the states of Nagaland, Assam, Meghalaya, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, you will find traces of the Himalayan mountains. Here it is known as Purvanchal Mountains. Basically it is the eastern extension of the Himalayan range. We also know that the Himalayan range is divided into different ranges. The first one is the Trans Himalayas, which is basically the main Himalayan mountains that lie in the Tibet and hence it is also called as Tibetan Himalaya. The second one is Greater Himalaya or Himadri. Here you will find the Mount Everest and Kanchenjunga ranges. Basically the extreme northern part of Nepal, Sikkim, Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh. Throughout the year it's covered with snow. You will also find needle-leaved coniferous trees. There's not much of lush greenery. The third one is the Middle Himalaya. This is where most of the valleys and hill stations are located. Basically the middle portion of Nepal, Sikkim, Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh. You will find broad-leaved evergreen trees. That means lush green dense forest cover actually starts from this region. And the fourth one is the outer Himalaya. Or we can say the foothills of Himalaya or the Shivalik range. This is the southern region of Nepal, Sikkim, Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh. Here the mountains are not very high. They are somewhere around 900 to 1200 meters. And below the Shivalik range, you see this white portion of land. Most of the Assam lies here. And then Bangladesh also exists. This is basically the plain low-lying valleys which are formed due to continuous running of Himalayan streams and rivers. In a rough sketchy way, this place looks something like this. This is the outer boundary. Then we have the inner boundary. Let's put some more inner boundaries. At the center we have the Brahmaputra plain. If you look at the entire region from a side angle, the landform looks something like this. The Tibetan region is higher in elevation and from there the elevation of the landform gradually decreases. And the reason behind this is, around 10 to 50 million years ago, the Indian continental plate collided with the Eurasian plate, which led to the formation of the Tibetan plateau as well as the Himalayan mountains. Therefore, it makes absolute sense to imagine the rivers flowing downwards with massive speed and these rivers also carry a huge amount of sediments which by the way forms the low-lying plain areas which we just saw. I hope with this informal illustration you are now able to imagine the geographic terrain of the northeastern region of our country. Now let's look at the following pattern of the most important river, the Brahmaputra. The Brahmaputra originates in the Angsi glacier located on the northern side of the Himalayas in Tibet. In Tibet, the name of the Brahmaputra is river Yalong Sangpo. The Brahmaputra flows eastwards parallel to the Himalayas. On reaching the Namcha Barwa, it is a mountain in the Tibetan Himalaya. It takes a U-turn and turns south to enter India from Arunachal Pradesh, where it is called the river Dihang. Now I want you to understand this. The Tibetan plateau is higher in elevation. Because the Tibetan plateau was formed by continental collision between the Indian and the Eurasian plate some 10 to 50 million years ago. This is also the reason behind the formation of the Himalayan mountains. The Tibetan plateau is also the highest and largest plateau in the world. The Tibetan plateau is at a height of around 4 to 5 km above the sea level. From that height, the Brahmaputra river enters into the state of Arunachal Pradesh. Just imagine the speed of the river. With that much of speed, the river brings huge quantities of fertile alluvial soil. After entering Arunachal Pradesh, river Dihang or the Brahmaputra suddenly turns into a braided river system, where the mighty river turns into a network of small channels. The river again turns to the southwest and enters into the state of Assam, which is a low-lying valley. Just to gain some perspective, if you look at the elevation of Dibrugar district, it is just 108 meter above the sea level. Just imagine the elevation of Tibet. From there the water of Brahmaputra has come to this low-lying valley. On top of it, if it rains heavily in Assam or in Arunachal Pradesh, 
the water level will rise dangerously while flowing towards the low-lying Assam Valley. The river flows through the entire breadth of the Assam Valley and finally enters into Bangladesh near Dhubri. Bangladesh is also a low-lying plain area and that's how the river flows from Arunachal Pradesh to Assam and then finally into Bangladesh. From there it flows to the south and finally drains into the Bay of Bengal. Now along the way there are several Himalayan streams that joins the river Brahmaputra. The first river is Subansiri. Although it originates in the Tibetan region of Himalayas, it flows east and southeast into Arunachal Pradesh, then south to the Assam Valley, where it finally joins the Brahmaputra River in Lakhimpur district. The second river is Kameng. Even this river originates from the Himalayas of the India-Tibet border. From there it flows south and enters into the state of Arunachal Pradesh. It then enters into the state of Assam through Sonitpur district and finally it joins the river Brahmaputra at Tezpur. The third river is Beki. It originates from the Himalayan glaciers in northern Bhutan. From there it flows south in the Indian state of Assam and joins the Brahmaputra river basin. The fourth one is river Manas. Now this river originates in the Himalayan mountains of southern Bhutan and goes southwest direction before entering into the state of Assam. In the state of Assam, it flows straight to the south and follows a meandering course for about 75 kilometers before joining the river Brahmaputra. And the fifth river is Gadadhar. It also has another name which is Sankosh River. Now this river originates in northern Bhutan and flows in the southern direction along the border of West Bengal and Assam and finally drains into the Brahmaputra in the state of Assam. So all these five rivers are tributaries of the river Brahmaputra and they all originate from the Himalayan mountains and flow towards the low-lying valley of Assam. Presently all these Himalayan rivers and streams are overflowing. They are way above their danger mark. Due to which all the districts that are on the banks of river Brahmaputra and its tributaries are severely affected by flood water. Here is Kaziranga National Park. Even this place is submerged in floods water. There are reports of animals dying due to this catastrophe. There are many other national parks and wildlife sanctuaries like Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary, Laukhava Wildlife Sanctuary and Manas National Park which are severely affected due to Assam floods. Besides erosion of river banks, a large number of people have been displaced and affected. Roads, embankments, bridges, crops and other infrastructure have been damaged at many locations in the flood affected districts. I hope you understood the geographic terrain of Assam and how excess monsoon rain triggers flood and destruction year after year.